were on Star Trek. That's right. Yes. Like, it doesn't get any bigger right. than yeah, yeah, Star yeah. Trek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I you've was... got to have a photo in your house of you and Star Trek. I have nothing right? from what? anything. Nothing. I don't even watch anything I'm in. What? I've never, I never watch anything. Oh. I think that there's some actors that like to watch themselves, and I think yeah. there's some actors. My whole thing is that even when I do an audition, I'm not someone who labors over 100 takes. I, I, I'll Typically, you I'll film it. one. Yeah. If I don't feel like I've got it, I'll just do two more without checking. Yeah. I'll pick the best one, and I'll send that. The human response to seeing ourselves on camera is trying to edit out the things that we think are, make us unattractive or that we think make us you know, not look our best or be unappealing in some way. But that's also the stuff that makes us human. So instead of opening those floodgates to me trying to self-edit, I just need to give myself the freedom to live and be. And therefore, I try to watch myself as little as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Forte presents number I don't even know, but it's going to be a good one. one. It's yeah, number, number one. one. Joshua Bainbridge. That's me. The actor, the yeah. wrestler, yeah. the teacher, yeah. the many things. Yeah, <laughs> all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> what else have I been called, do you think? Yeah, what do people call me when I'm not uh, Feature yeah. actor is yes, what yeah, I yeah, wanted yeah. to get right into. So you recently had your first feature film lead role? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Tell yeah. me about this. Because well, this just happened, right? This just happened, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so we, we just wrapped it um, right uh, in January. Yeah. Um, so it's called Nobel and the Kid, and it's directed by James uh, Eusis, and uh, it's starring myself and Athena Park, and it's, it takes place in like a post-apocalyptic dystopian yeah, world with lots of high tech and scavenging and this horrible fog land where people go crazy and, and I play this character who um, worked for the kid's father and we weren't like the best of guys you know just doing what we could to survive and something happens at the opening of the movie where she's the only survivor left in her house mm -hmm. and begrudgingly I, I take her um, and try to keep her alive from the people that are, that are after her and that's what the film's about. And it was a lot of fun. We filmed it over a month. Uh, and um, and it was a really exciting experience. And I got to do, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of fighting and, and, you know, different cool, cool stuff that I got to use my unique skill set for. Yeah. And, um, and I got a lot of friends of mine ended up in the film as well. Yeah. And it was a really great experience. That's so cool. Yeah. So we were talking before the cameras were rolling about you coming here. You're not from North Bay. You came here. That's right. Yeah. Finished school. Went to uh, Canada College. I did. Yeah. I went to Canada College. Yeah. What did you take? I took theater arts. Theater arts. Yeah. And from there, there was incentives. There was a talk of an industry of a film industry. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Is it was it film that was interesting to you or theater? So because you do a lot of both. I do a lot of both. Yeah. So um, I do a lot of film and television. Yeah. And. I create a lot of theater, right? Cool. So when I was graduating, I think I was in the graduating class of 2009, that's the year that the film tax credit in the Northern Ontario tax credit started. Yeah. So this, this tax credit got announced. All of my classmates were like, we better go to where the work is. And I was like, I got this sneaking suspicion. <laughs> the work's going to be here. Interesting. It's coming here. Yeah. And as far as like, you know, 20 something year old guys who are just prime out of uh, acting school, I bet you that if every, all of you were leaving, I'm going to be the only one. So, so, so I, you stuck, I around. stuck around. Tell me the truth. Was there a girl or somebody or something? I, con well, I convinced her to stick around too. <laughs> okay, so we both stuck around. And, um, and then both of us, like I was unioned up. Yeah. Like four months out of graduating school. I was Amazing. fully, and just like fully uh, unionized yeah. in and protected and, and moving. You're like the poster child for that whole that whole grant basically argument. I right. mean, I think about it because it's 15 years ago. You were, did this? Happen? Uh, yeah, whatever. 10, it is. Close 12, getting there. Yeah, so 2000, yeah. like I said, 2009 is when I graduated. 2000, oh, so, yeah, yeah, okay. so we're so, close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's so a while ago, and now you're in a fe you're the lead actor. That's my point. Is yeah, you, yeah. You know, you started. Because you weren't getting big at the no, beginning. I, I, it was... I, yeah, it was like small roles, small roles. I, I I grinded for a lot of years. Yeah. You know, taken. You know, I I had a thankfully. You know, I I developed a good reputation of being you know good good at the job. Yeah. 
so there was a lot of stuff where if, if a, a lot of projects came up here and for the most part you know I always got something yeah going in, in, in a lot of them right I yeah. was I ended up in a lot of them and um, and you know a smaller smaller yeah. roles and then every once in a while I someone would take a chance and I'd get a bigger supporting role and, and but never a lead yeah. you know but but you know healthy healthy roles you know yeah um, and uh, and then it started you know picking up traction and then well and your skill set was probably going up because you're on film you're on sets all the time you yeah. see how it works you see how different directors work you're teaching too right yes yes when um, did you start teaching so I, I've been teaching stage combat I, I certified as a actor combatant when I was still in high school yeah and I did that oh, okay uh, yeah so uh, fight directors Canada used to do the certification at Canador yeah and as like a incentive to come to the program I was given the opportunity to take the stage combat course full out while I was still in high school That's early. Crazy. And if I did that, that was like a like a you know, I, I'd been accepted to the program and this was that that like that this nice little incentive push to, to take yeah. and come to Canada. Yeah. So I I certified early yeah. when I was still in high school and I thought I'm gonna go for I didn't I didn't just do the course, I was like I wanna do full certification. So I got certified with FDC, so I was a certified actor combatant. Mm -hmm. So at when I was still in high school, I was able to start doing all that stage combat stuff. So that snowballed, and eventually I started teaching stage combat. Mm -hmm. So I've been teaching at Canador, teaching stage combat only mm -hmm. for quite a quite a long time. Okay. I think ten years now. Okay. But then during the pandemic, right before the pandemic, they made a switch, where the program switched from um, Canador College acting for theater to acting for stage and screen. Mm -hmm. And at that time. I applied to be the guy to do mm -hmm. all the develop, help develop all the film courses, mm -hmm. and to make that happen. So mm -hmm. I, I got that job during the pandemic. Yeah, we instituted, I think, five film courses, and um, and then I started teaching those. Canada yeah. didn't really take, didn't really shut down. We went online for a bit, yeah. and then they put in a bunch of money to make sure that the college could stay open during the pandemic. Yeah. So outside of a very short window, I was still in the classroom. You were working. And I, was, I thought at the time, this is a great way to get through the pandemic while there's no mm -hmm. film and TV mm -hmm. and I can't do my theater because yeah. like we had we had yeah. shows, we were touring a show, we got shut down. Everything was shut down, um, especially theaters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like everything was shut down. Yeah. And we were like we were literally like the day that they announced the shutdown, we were in rehearsal. So that kind of flowed for yeah. you to yeah. jump to the film, to the teaching, prepare yes. the curriculum, plus you're learning. And yeah, absolutely. And certifying All the time, getting, learning every day. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then. So what happened there is that I thought this will get me, this will float me until when everything everything opens back up. Yeah. But then I loved it. I loved being in the classroom. I loved. Mm -hmm. I looked at every day it was like a new directing gig, right? Like yeah. you're, you know, and I had a lot of fun. And then I so I I stayed. Yeah. Um, and I and it's made a, it's you know there's been a lot of joy in that working with you know. Yeah. 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 People coming up who are super interested, keen. Yeah. Eager, young. Yeah, and it's excited. You know, it's exciting to see that that program evolve into this film program, this film theater hybrid program, yeah. um, and it's been really exciting to be a part of that journey. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was working for Rod Carley, who just retired, mm -hmm. and we had a really great team. And as so those were like the the last couple of years that Rod was there was that that turnover into the film um, centric program. Yeah. And now Michelle Jackett's taken over as the okay. as the program coordinator and artistic director of the program, and she's doing a fantastic job. Yeah. So I've been really lucky to be um, yeah have you a good captain the at the ship. So uh, at the helm of the ship. So I'm I'm and I'm really enjoying being there. Yeah. You know? And like right now we're working on I'm 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 doing the final show, which is a big theater performance class. Well, this is so coming up. We got this is coming up. Let's let's plug that. Yeah, let's plug that. Yeah, okay, let's let's talk about it. So. So I'm directing Frankenstein. And there's how many people uh, when you say, so the year, like how many people? So the graduating class has 14 students. Okay. And so we decided to, to do Frankenstein. Yeah. And I've written an, an adaption of Frankenstein. Okay. And I'm directing it for the, for the college with the whole graduating class in it. Cool. And that goes up um, this week. Yeah. It goes up. Uh, April 18th, 19th, and 20th at the G-Wing at Canada College in the theater. That puts pressure on us, Adam. We gotta have this edited and out. 
Otherwise, it's outdated. Look, it's we're, outdated. Putting, we're, we're stamping yeah, it right now. That's what I, I have to put myself in a corner like that. Yeah, at time I, of recording, exactly. it happens this week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, if you listen to this next week, and it happened and, last week. And when I'm like, it was oh, great. he say, hey, it's on camera, Rich. <laughs> like, <laughs> we got to do it. Get going. Yeah, yeah cool. So, anyway, yeah. so Frankenstein, Frankenstein coming up. Yeah. You, re, you, you, re, you adapted it. I adapted it, yeah. yeah. So, and where is it? It's performing out of the college. Yeah, so the G-Wing um, at the college, new, the is Canada that the College new Theater. Is yeah, it's the new? beautiful new theater that they've built over the last so couple of years. Beautiful. It's It's awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, top of the line, everything, yeah. all the bells and whistles. Yeah. I wish North Bay went and supported this kind of thing and saw the infrastructure that's up there. Because well, sometimes I'm surprised, you know, that people don't know what's up there. Well, you know, it is new, but this is a great chance yeah. for everybody to, everybody go to Let's that theater. Go, go to that Bay. theater, see the facility and see Frankenstein. Yes, yeah. yes. And so when is it? What are the, where do we get information? So at uh, online, just search Canada College Presents Frankenstein. It's on Canada Facebook. Board. It's on the website. Perfect. Um, all the information that the the ticket price is just a donation to the gathering place. Beautiful. So show up with a bit so of cash or a again. can of baked beans and Beautiful. you can get in. Yeah, yeah like, no, that's great. Yeah. That's really cool. So that's coming up. And we were talking also about the film industry and your take, your spidey sense on what's going to happen. Yeah. I kind of cut you off in your previous story, but it all ties together with how the evolution of the industry, how you've seen. Yeah. To me, what's super yeah. interesting from your perspective as a young actor coming here sure. and now really forging your way right because it's not an obvious path no no but here you are you've done the feature film but also there's so much coming like yeah. i last time you were in the studio before this very last the last week you were on star trek that's right yes like it doesn't get any bigger right. than yeah, yeah, star yeah. trek yeah 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 or like no no that's I'm right sure that yeah was in toronto Maybe it was yeah we went some, i filmed yeah. that in toronto i had a couple days on that we went and like was, you've got to have a photo in your house of you and Star Trek. I have nothing right? from what? anything. Nothing. I don't even watch anything I'm in. What? I've never, I never watch anything. Oh come on. I just guys. got other things I'm to do. Sorry, I okay. <laughs> sorry about the audio there, yelling in the mic. But yeah. Really? Yeah. The most I ever watch Dude. is when I come here and do ADR and do. That's funny. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's interesting. Is yeah. that typical? I think that there's some actors that like to watch themselves, and I think yeah. there's some actors. And my whole thing is that. Like when even when I do an audition, yeah. like I I I'm not someone who labors over a hundred takes. I I'll typically you I'll film it. one. Yeah. If I don't feel like I've got it, I'll just do two more without checking. Yeah. I'll pick the best one and I'll send that. Yeah. Because, like I think we're all, unless we're you know extremely narcissistic, which I wish I had that gift of being okay. extremely narcissistic, but I'm not. I'm yeah. a very self conscious person. Yeah. I think most people are. Yeah. I think yeah. what are the human response to seeing ourselves on camera? is trying to take out the things or edit out the things that we think are, make us unattractive or that we think make us you know, not look our best or be unappealing in some way. But that's also the stuff that makes us human. And makes so us interesting. It makes us interesting Korean because Korean. our humanity is what makes us interesting. Totally. So instead of, instead of opening those floodgates to me trying to self-edit, yeah. I just need to give myself the freedom it. to live and be yeah. And therefore, I try to watch myself that. as little as possible, you know. I love that. But I see people here in the studio hear their voice out loud or see themselves and everybody just, oh, right? everybody has yeah. a hard time with it. You know, everyone's got an idea of what yeah. they are, yeah. what they want to be. Yeah, exactly. And I don't want those things to interfere <laughs> with my performance. So, yeah. yeah. Who inspires you big time? Like, who do you, um, I'm a big YouTube, like I listen to positive, you know, things that I want to go towards. Sure. On YouTube. Do you have people that you check in on that are like, like uh, your little secret weapons when you need to learn something or I program listen to a, yourself? I listen to a lot of um, movie podcasts. I listen to a lot of industry news podcasts. Oh, yeah? And I listen to another a podcast about like filmmaking and the history of different films and yes. stuff like that. Um, Speaking, so can we go into something that's kind of interesting happening right now that I don't know enough about, but sure. I bet you do? Sure. So we had a big strike last year because yeah. in the uni in the United States, their union, yeah, the Canadian version is Actra. You're part of yep. that, right? Yep, I'm the Oslo. So okay, yeah, I'm an on set on set liaison for you're Actra. Okay, so that means yeah. you even have a role yeah. to make sure that things are working in that domain yeah. here. Now, I hear there's possibly another strike coming up. And what, like, what does this mean? How does it work? Why is this happening? 
that. Really, thing. fundamentally, why is all these strikes in the entertainment industry happening right now? Um, money is everything. It comes down to it's money. All. It comes down to money. I mean, in the in the states, the SAG after strike. Yeah. Um, I can speak to more than the writer's strike, but the writer's strike as well. But there hadn't been a SAG after strike. There hadn't been an a, a overhaul of fees since the 1980s. Yeah. So it went a long time. It went a long time. It was overdue. Way overdue. Did they get what they wanted? I think they got what they, they needed. They got what they needed. I think that there's stuff that we can't, we can't anticipate how it's going to evolve further, which is a lot of, you know, the AI stuff is scary. Yeah. Um, and the ability to replace actors or writers or you know with ai yeah. is is terrifying because this is currently you know we talked about this before we start rolling this is the creative industry yeah. so when we start putting ai in there in place of people we're just making it the industry yeah right we're taking the creative yeah. out of it because yeah. ai can't create but AI then, can I totally agree. But don't you think that'll make creatives even more impactful? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and that's yeah. why the, that's why the importance so, of these strikes are. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, you know. So so it was good from your perspective. It was good that the actors did what they did. They one, made progress. And absolutely. now there's another union. Who's who's so, or is it the same union that has to do something else? So the, the, there's um, there's always looming strikes. Like who are we kidding? But right now the 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 it's true. The temporary resolve that was put in place was a three-year resolve. Okay. It's a three-year term. But now, so here's the thing. Like, ACTRA, we work on a three-year term always. Yes. We're just rolling over yeah. a three, uh, the IPA, the independent production agreement, which is what everything runs off of, all union projects run off of here. Yeah. Those, those turn over every three years. Yes. And there's negotiations every three years. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there, what happened for us and what could happen again is that the there's so many productions here in Canada that are tied to performers and writers and actions happening in the states. There's a lot of SAG, AFTRA, ACTRA agreements. So where we got that backlog of stuff was, it would have been in bad, it would have been really bad form yeah. for us to have carried on or replaced anybody and moved forward with any work yes. that the partners that were involved in the project were prevented from doing. So sense. that created a, we had a, like a, a line there where a lot of stuff that was in production, which takes months to get something in production, could be take a year, um, couldn't move forward and stuff had to leapfrog it, which created delay, which created a backlog of work. Um, with the biggest thing that's challenging right now to the industry that's going to create a lot of strikes as necessity to happen is the way that residuals work around streaming. Mm. AI is the big thing in front that everybody thinks they should be worried about. But the stream streaming is the problem. Yeah. Okay. Like streaming is because no one knows how to regulate this thing the way yes. that. Yes. And, and they're just platforms. They're not. They're saying they don't host it. They don't. Yeah. Yeah. So Still. like there was a long time where like when an actor does a role on for TV. Yeah. They get something that's called a buyout. Yes. And buyouts are, are what actors put in place. Yeah. After a SAG in the States still was working on a residual system. The buyouts which Actor put in place are they project residuals up to a certain percentage and prepay it. Pay yeah. it right at the beginning when you do the roll. Yeah. They don't they didn't weren't doing that in the States. They don't do that in the oh, States. Okay. So they're on a residual system. But how do they monitor the residuals when you're online? Residuals used to be measured by ad revenue. And Netflix oh. doesn't have ads. It does now. They're figuring that out. But how do they tie that to a, yeah. a program? How do they tie that to a project? How do they tie? They don't tie that to a rerun. We don't watch reruns. We stream yeah. old shows. It's yeah. not. Doesn't work the same way. Yeah. Very interesting. So that's what they're trying to figure out. How to how to balance all that. And I'm sure there's a lot of money involved. A lot of money involved, right? Right. And because we need entertainment. Yeah. I don't think the attention's going anywhere off the screens. No. I don't think no. anybody's thinking the industry is going to go somewhere, no. like go away. Right. It's just how does it work? Yeah. And it's the streaming really that changed the game. Yeah. And, and we're still not really clear on how that's going to work. And every network and every everyone that ever produced a show yeah. had this idea during the pandemic because movie theaters were closed down. Yeah. There was, a, you know, things weren't moving. 
um, that everybody should have their own streaming platform. Yeah. Well, that's unaffordable for the regular consumer yeah. to subscribe to everybody's platform. hugely divided. Right. Yeah. There's all this money in streaming during the pandemic when everything was closed, and now that everything's opened back up and people are going back to the theater and people going because yeah. they want to see things in person, yeah. maybe the pandemic was a good shot in the arm to remind the average consumer that being there makes a difference. Makes a difference. Yeah. The collective experience is yeah. important. Yeah. So people are going back so. out to watch their entertainment. And yeah. now you've got all these platforms, streaming platforms, that can't figure out how to make money off of their yeah. product that they pulled off of everybody else's stuff. Totally. Right? Whoa. Which which That's then in turn yeah. makes the studio go, Well, how do we how are we getting our money back? Yeah. Yeah. Which in turn the performers, the writers, the directors, everybody who gets a piece of that pie yeah. is now going, hey, 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 yeah. how are you measuring how we get paid on the back end? Yeah. And that's and there in line is the big that's the big traffic jam right now and why all these interesting. Yeah. yeah. What a fascinating industry. Yeah. It is. It's pretty crazy. And not easy to understand, is it? Do you find it like I, I mean you're in it, so you're pretty deep in it, so you've had time to like suss it out, figure it out. Yourself. Yeah, but it's not normal. No, it's not. Normal. <laughs> it's not normal, but it's people, it's right? People. It's, it's it's this industry driven. so much it's is so just people, people right? Yeah. It's what I love about this industry is it's a fully skill based industry. Yeah, you know, and that's why I think like the stuff with like you skill know based industry, right? Okay. And I, I mean, I don't mean that like to make light of anything else, or that might sound overly simplistic, but it's like. At the end of the day, you know, what's going to help the North Bay industry get bigger? And it's gotten so, so, um, much, better. so yeah, much so much better well, in comparison yeah. to where it was five years ago, 10 yeah. years ago, 15 years ago when it didn't exist. Um, but what's going to make it bigger is, is the retention of people yeah. with a high skill set, yeah. right? Like a crew. Yeah. Is a film will be as good as its crew, and a crew will be as as, as so strong how is as that, its. So okay. Yeah. Then I'm going to pose you this question. Yes, sir. How do we create that as an organization, not as a government, not as a college, not as, like at the end of the day, what I keep thinking is, well, you need a winning business. Like at the end of the day, yeah. if you have great films being made out of here, and that's how you have a reputation as a yeah. place, sort of like how Montreal is with uh, Cirque du Soleil type, right. type stuff. And then they have schools that obviously feed into that. But there's like a culture in Montreal yeah. around busking and yeah. the arts that feeds a whole thing that's huge because we all go to Montreal to have a good time because yeah. of that culture. Yeah. So I guess in a small town like ours, like 50,000 yes. people, really, I keep thinking, okay, how, because we have these entrepreneurs that like, I was thinking about it this morning, there's really like seven or eight people, like businesses, sure. Sure. film businesses that are like really creating the projects, right? right? Northern Ontario Film yeah. Studios the and and the likes yeah. like from Ben Ferrella to those partners and then yeah. you had the North Star guys doing what they yeah. were trying to do yeah. you and you got Don like Gano, you guys like uh, guys, uh, uh, Derek, Derek Diario, Diario right? uh, David Ansamo Kovacoski yeah, exactly. there's, there's so a lot of great people here there's great people that are like but not really together ever you know what I mean like, right. I well, they're all know. working on their own projects. They're all working on their own projects. And, and thank so, goodness they are, because that means that there's more projects. Exactly. And then there's, and then we can spread that out throughout the north. So in the north, there's probably like, how many people, how many companies do you think producing original content? Right. That right. is like working out of here. Let's say there's 25. Sure. That's cool. That's yeah. a start. I'm curious over the next 25 years when we're in our 60s and 70s yeah, 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 yeah. how we're going to have built you know the apple because at the end of the day Silicon Valley as an example of a place where we know attracts a certain type it's when all those independents still feed off an ecosystem right. that's enriching them all how do we create an ecosystem that even though there's those 25 different independent people that have to develop their independent project yeah something that happens in the ecosystem like what happened at uh, around waterloo and kitchener with tech right you know for film sure. i just keep thinking because sudbury there's often this north Bay sudbury imaginary rivalry right right that i think is hilarious but like we're one 
Yeah. Like we're one in the eyes of NOHFC that's right. funding the grant. Like I think we're one. When I met yes. South by Southwest in Austin, Texas, talking about the industry here, we're talking about what's happening Sudbury in North, in North and Bay, North Bay yeah. and Sault Ste. Marie. Yes. Yeah, and they look so at this region as one thing. This is where the money it all I counts think, in the same. Yeah, yes. it's all from it's the, the cities. Same pot. The cities are competing to see who can yeah. make themselves more attractive to the producers. Yeah. But it is one. It is one, I think. But even, wouldn't you say with the crew, my question to you is, wouldn't you say even with that pool of crew, so at the end of the day, the problem yeah. that you're saying is p the right amount of people c can North Bay handle four films. That comes down to crew capacity in our area. Yeah. So they'll always bring in actors. Yeah. They always Exactly. Will. Exactly. All, that's they'll a, always pay the extra money to bring in to, a performer. Yeah. But you've got... 12 performers to 20 performers in the average film. Yeah. Right? It's the, all the other things. It's all the other stuff. That we have to build locally. Yeah. So how does this grow? Yeah. It grows by people who are getting very good at their jobs or people who are good at their jobs. Yeah. Working deciding for those people. Deciding to stay. Deciding to To stay. make their projects happen here. The funders are not going to say no to more, putting more money into the ecosystem and, and, to um and to making and to seeing money get made right yeah. no that's what that's why they want it that's i think it's so, starting i think it, i really see it starting because of the success of the individual oh absolutely but but i also see that it would be need it needs like uh it needs uh more yeah. something more we, something. it always needs more right yeah. so the the situation as it stands right now is that you've got a lot of people who are coming up here who are um, doing good work, who are knowledgeable and have a high skill set, who then go away. Yeah. And you got a lot. You got a massive school right now that's pumping out thirty, oh, right. you know, yeah. thirty new crew members a semester, whatever that is, right? Who are who are coming out of school with all this knowledge and they're going and looking to find work. Yeah. And and then they're going to go to the place that they've been told is where it's special and where they'll find the work that that they want. Yeah. And at a certain point, people will decide that the place that they are, they're going to make special. Yeah. Um, and those people that will keep making that choice yeah. and that, that number of people that are here on the ground yeah. hustling for the work and getting really skilled yeah. is going to grow. Yeah. And then the, eco the ecosystem here will be able to support more yeah. because there will be more skilled people. Yeah. Because if a film has to, if a film is here because yeah. they're going to get a tax break, which is fantastic yeah. for us. But then they lose that tax break yeah. by housing the people that they need to travel in to yeah, make that project, make then they could film it anywhere. Yeah. But the more that the Lord. that we slowly build that base of that skill set here, the yeah. people who are available are available. Mm -hmm. It doesn't like as an actor, the whole thing is like it's the grind, right? Yeah. And I know, you know, there's gonna be lean years and this and that's not for there might be people coming out of school they're like i don't care about north bay i don't yeah. want lean years i just want to go work and they'll go work yeah. and then there's going to be people that are like i want to make this place thrive yeah, yeah. and they'll hustle and yeah. they'll grind and and they'll Figure become part of this ecosystem yeah. and this ecosystem will hopefully then feed people yeah. for the next yeah. 100 years yeah cool that's cool you should tell your story for you, you're like I think you're the poster child for the potential of what that could be. I do. I, I think that, it's amazing. Like I it's super that. inspiring. You know, and I had, you should have a couple pictures of the shows you've been on so people believe you. Right, right. Well, they can check my IMDb. It's oh, okay, there. okay. That's yeah, where we just go. Just Google my name. Eventually, Google. You get deep enough into it, and then a I bit right go around find B, B A I N B R, okay. and then Google's like, "Hey, we think we know who you're talking about. Is it this guy?" Yeah, and you find me. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks so much for coming and doing this, Adam. I'm sure we're. Are we at about time? You know. Yeah, 27. 27. What else? What else do we have to pro? Oh, the wrestling. I didn't talk, talk about the most. I got. Can I can't finish this podcast without talking. So I get it now, though, because when you were t telling the, your progress of the combat, what did you call yeah, it? Yeah, stage, combat? stage combat and active stage combat. Stage combat. Yeah. It all made sense. How yeah. I see you on posters. Uh, wearing uh, spandex with your arms <laughs> up. With the, yeah. I mean, you are full-on wrestler. I am man. a wrestler. Yeah, I'm a pro. A Moonlight is a pro wrestler. You yeah. are pro wrestling. Yeah. In, I don't even know the league system. Like, where, yeah. where are you doing this? So, I'm doing it all over. I've been really fortunate, really fast to get booked 
and to do a lot of cool I've been I've been given some cool opportunities really early in my wrestling career but I trained under coach Dan Jarris here in North Bay he has a school called Energy Y Energy Y Pro Wrestling okay. Academy fantastic coach yeah uh, we've got a great class of people and we're just always adding more and he's always looking for new students okay and I heard about this a couple years ago and I talked to a friend of mine who's also an actor and he's always been we've always loved wrestling and stuff like that and you know I thought I have lived is that Bedard, every, uh, Morgan, Morgan Bedard, Bedard yeah Bedard. yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's amazing. he is amazing yeah and <laughs> Um, so you guys are like, let's go wrestle. Let's go wrestle. <laughs> Come on. So Morgan, yeah. myself, and another uh, local artist named Clayton Windat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, we all decided to sign up because I thought, like, I've, I had like all these childhood dreams, you know, yeah. and I've lived every single one of my childhood dreams at a high professional level, except for pro wrestling, which so, is the one I thought would never happen, right? So I thought, if it's not now, it's never going to happen. Yeah. This uh, felt like. You know, this was the door yeah. to the lat. You know, checking that last thing off that, as a little kid, I, I dreamed about doing. Mm -hmm. So I started training with Dan, and then he gave us our showcase where we all his students get to do one match in front of an audience. Yeah, and it's usually what's called a, a like a pre-show match or a dark match, which is it's it's before the show begins. It's like to warm the crowd up, right? Yeah, yeah. and it went really well. And then Dan said, so is this, you got what you needed out of, out of it now? Like, you're all done? You got your, did your three months? You got your match? I said, I said you know, I, I'm enjoy, I enjoy this. Yeah. If, you, if you'd keep me around, if you want to keep me around, I'd love to keep working and keep yeah. training. And I did. And a lot of the students do that, uh, stick around because it's, so, it's, it's addictive, you know? Yeah. It's and so it's a, such a thing of passion, right? So um, I kept, kept training. And so Northland Wrestling is our local yes. um, show, which is on a hot streak, it's sold out like eight shows in a row. It's just Isn't like, they're just, something? it's unbelievably Davidi? good. No, no, they, they're using St. Andrews now. St. Andrews. St. Andrews is currently the home of uh, Northland Wrestling. Okay. And then they'll be at the Granite Club for the big show in June, which is Conquest Six. That's awesome. And Have they done a show at the Granite Club before? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So they've That's done a couple like the shows. yearly. Yeah, and like last year they one. did a couple shows at the Grand Club, but this year now we're doing it. This is one bit massive show a year. Yeah. It's gonna be at the Grand Club, and then we're doing because he used to only do at first it was like one show a year, and then it was two shows a year, and now he's we got ten shows this year. That's beautiful. Yeah, That's and it's crazy. fantastic, and it's cool being a part of the the local group that are yeah. that are that are working. I'm sure it's a community. And then from that, I've gotten bookings with other companies, and I've gone on tours, and I've gone and I've worked. You know, That's I've worked nice. Hall of Famers and I've gotten to get in the ring with, you know, people that have been doing it at the highest level imaginable. You know, I've wrestled people who have wrestled on WrestleMania. Yeah, you know what I mean? Nice. Like more than one, you know? Yeah. So um, it's exciting. It's really cool. And I think that my acting background helped with that because For I think sure. I, I'm a bad guy, you know? Yeah. I'm what's called a heel yeah, uh, yeah. in wrestling. Yeah. So I, I at, a, at the, the performance level that I can bring to it, I'm really good at making people hate me. Yeah. And, uh, and, then, and then that makes me valuable for a booker <laughs> yeah. who can bring me in and yeah. say, okay, we need the audience yeah. to think you're the biggest, baddest guy around yeah. so that it means something when you go against yeah. the people, person that they know the, the from life. TV. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the kind of the role that I fill on, in, so, on the circuit. So you yeah. really are living your childhood I'm doing dreams. it all, yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. By going countercurrent, coming up north when... Maybe that wasn't St so obvious. Yeah, staying here in, in North Bay when everybody went away, deciding yeah. to make the place that yeah. you live special yeah. instead of going and finding that special place. That yeah. was kind of, yeah. I think. Yeah, uh, me too. I mean, I relate a lot to that story. I'm really happy you shared it. I didn't realize yeah. that was the journey, but that's, that's beautiful. And we can do everything here. The other thing that I'm amazed at the more I travel is that we have everything we need here to be world class. Like the yeah. filmmaking, you know, is a perfect example. Yeah. Like we've had Oscar nominated little cabin. Like there's been some crazy quality, good, good. Like we can create as good as anybody. That's true. And I mean. As well, I guess I should say. No, hey. Better both. Bit, yeah. yeah. Right. Maybe what we are, maybe the people that are here that are hustling and staying and bringing the projects here, they, what they are creating is good. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Totally. For the community. Yeah. For the artists here, for the for the professionals here, for the aspiring professionals here. Yeah. They are creating good. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. So Frankenstein coming up. That's right. 
very very yeah, soon. Frankenstein, dates. April eighteenth uh, to twentieth. Wrestling. At when do, do you know when your next wrestling? Hey, so is? the next wrestling show is uh, Malice. Northland Wrestling presents Malice. Okay. It's it's the closing night of Frankenstein. So I'm going to be in two places at oh, once that night. Crazy. Um, and then the big wrestling show of the year is Conquest Six, which is June fifteenth. June fifteenth. Okay, yeah. those three things. And then if we want to check up on your career and what you've done, we find you on. Yeah, IMDb. check me out on on IMDb. I just wrapped. Uh, I just wrapped a romantic comedy i'm doing some sky med this week oh cool i'm gonna be on that um uh nobel and the kid should be coming out sometime in the summer that's what people were hoping for and that's uh excellent. yeah well joshua i wish you like all the continuing success in the world i mean maybe it's just the beginning too you know like that's what i mean is we don't we really don't know where this stuff can take us and You've had the balls to like do it your way. Right. I've been watching you for years, and you're always building with the same right. That you seem to have a good team around you. Yeah, I a think, good core group of friends, eh? I think that when you when you have uh, when you can have put your faith in people to to know that if you know when you hand over a job that the job's going to be done at a really high level, um, that empowers you yeah. to do. As yeah. much as and you, and then you build on your success. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, and it snowballs, and it's just you, you hustle, you hustle, you hustle, yeah. until stuff starts coming to you. Yeah, yeah. You were Three Musketeer recently, eh? Yes, yeah. I, I wrote I and directed the Three Musketeers. Did I you enjoy it? I loved it. it? Oh, I'm so and glad. Can I tell you that I went to see it with somebody who's not from town, who's very interested in theater and filmmaking and all these things, and she had gotten me this ticket, so we went to see it, and her comments those fight scenes are they ever good i swear to right. god i'm not even just nice. i'm just realizing that's true the first thing she said to me was the how the fight scenes were like excellent yeah. you know that's great i mean just we had such stage. a great team but the coolest thing about that is besides the musketeers themselves we were all trained combatants yeah you almost everybody else in the show yeah we taught to sword fight yeah. to do the show they did great and we did fight camps yeah. twice a week yeah you could tell like it yeah. was really well done Really, really well done. Congratulations. So, okay, so uh, future everybody, check out um, Joshua. Check We're, it all out. Check it all out everywhere. Yeah. Follow, subscribe to the channel if you like our show and you want to see more of Joshua. I think we got to have you back. I'll come back whenever you want me. Yeah. yeah, and then I'm supposed to turn the show, I want to turn it more into like a news and events thing sure. too where we comment on stuff. That's great. Because like that's why I was like this union stuff we were talking about, so important, be, but... It's it's ongoing. Yeah, you know, it's always. It, and I'd love to have a platform where we can actually learn about this stuff yeah. and demystify it. Sure. So that we understand, you know, how to uh, create that community that's informed and knows. And and now we're making like world class projects happen right here. Sounds good. That's the vision. Adam, what do you think? We're done. Yeah, another show in the books. We did nice. it. Adam's on my butt because I'm a little inconsistent with my bookings. Gotcha. <laughs> Thanks for doing this, Adam. We'll catch you next time. Everybody, bye for now. Ciao.